Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar with me, Fawad Razak Zara, market analyst with Think Markets. Uh, I'm based in London. My colleague, Victor, usually joins me for this webinar. I think he's having some technical difficulties getting um, in the room, but if he does join us, he is more of a macro analyst and he always has some really interesting thoughts. But uh, insofar as this webinar is concerned, it's obviously live. Uh, so please, uh, for those of you who are here, don't hesitate to ask me questions. I'll be more than happy to analyze any markets that you guys are interested, uh, interested in. Now, for those of you who are watching this on, uh, on YouTube or elsewhere, uh, please consider joining us live next time so that you can, um, so, so that we can talk about the markets that you want me to talk about, right? Um, anyway, let's, let's uh, go through the risk warning very quickly and then we will begin. So these webinars are for informational only and, not, um, and uh, are not intended to provide trading or investment advice or personal recommendations. Any information relating to past performance of an investment does not necessarily guarantee future performance. Think markets shall not be responsible for any loss that you incur, either directly or indirectly, arising from any investment based on any information in this webinar. Please remember that the spreading, uh, spread betting and trading CFDs carry significant risks and may not be suitable for all investors. Now, um, in the last few days, guys, we we have seen um, we've seen the dollar continuing to weaken, and um, technology stocks in particular have come under significant pressure because of concerns that, well, there are two reasons: valuation concerns and also uh, concerns that inflation is um, is hotting up and uh, that may require central banks to tighten their, their belts in the months ahead. And so um, that's one of the reasons why uh, technology stocks have come uh, sharply lower. We'll cover the, uh, the uh, stock markets um, in a minute or so, but um, let me just quickly remind you what this webinar is about. So it happens every Tuesday at 11.30 London time. We have, uh, we talk about uh, major currency pairs, gold and indices uh, most of the time. Uh, we do touch on cryptos as well uh, from time to time. And uh, it's mainly technical analysis, but we do touch on fundamentals as well. And there's a Q&A session. Now, in terms of this week, we have uh, lots of central bank speeches coming up uh, today from Bank of uh, England uh, Governor uh, Bailey. Uh, we have lots of uh, FOMC members talking as well today. Uh, let's see if they will come out and calm investor nerves because technology shares have fallen sharply. Um, you know, Nasdaq futures are down uh, quite a bit today. Um, on Wednesday, we have UK GDP, uh, among other data highlights. Now, the pound has uh, had a really strong uh, performance of late. Um, it broke above the, the uh, 140 handle uh, yesterday, and uh, it uh, climbed to, I think, 141.50 before pausing. Uh, I think the the pound has the potential to rise further because um, because lockdowns are easing further in the UK, and uh, you know the vaccinations is going really well here, uh, which um, means that the, the domestic demand uh, is uh, probably going to um, help fuel a strong economic re recovery. That's what uh, the markets are betting. Um, which uh, explains why the pound is really outperforming all the other major currencies at, uh, at the moment. Um, on Wednesday as well, we have, um, we have US CPI. Um, so obviously um, inflation, is um, the focus is turning to inflation. And so far the Fed expects inflation to rise, but uh, this is going to be transitory, okay? So they don't expect inflation to uh, stick around for too long. Um, but if a CPI comes in hotter than expected, you know, we may see some fireworks because of that. Um, obviously, one month's worth of data is not going to change their views, but uh, if the trend turns and we see higher than expected readings on inflation, then that could worry the Fed. Now, remember that um, we've seen big, big gains for commodity prices uh, of late, which means that input costs are rising for manufacturers and producers, and that could be passed on to the consumer. So that's something to, to keep a close eye on um, as input costs rise and how much of that will be passed on uh, to the consumer. Um, on Thursday, it's going to be a little bit quieter uh, because uh, we, uh, there's going to be bank holidays in Germany, France, and, 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 and Switzerland. We do have the um, unemployment claims from the US and a couple of central bank speeches. Then on Friday, it's back to the US um, insofar as uh, data is concerned. 
as we have um, retail sales among a few other things to look forward to. So lots to 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 look forward to then this week in terms of macro data. Um, but the markets have been quite volatile, and uh, so hopefully we will uh, be. Oh, sorry, guys, one minute. Uh, Victor wants to join. Uh, let me just send him a message. Right, so so that's that's what's happening in terms of macro data, uh, macro events this week. Um, now, in terms of the markets, um, we have we always start off with the dollar index. Okay, so I'm gonna do that um, again. Now, for those of you who were here last week or watched the recording of the previous week's webinar, we talked about this area of resistance quite. Um, quite um, in quite detail because um, then the dollar index had formed a hammer candle on the weekly chart. This is the weekly chart. And I say that although this may look bullish, it, it, it has been, it has printed this hammer candle just ahead of the uh, resist or potential resistance area here, which uh, as it turned out, uh, did in fact turn into strong resistance and the dollar sold off. Right. So last week, then we formed a bearish engulfing candle on the dollar index. Um, which uh, uh, suggests that the, the trend uh, continues to remain to the downside for the dollar unless we go back above this shaded resistance zone. So um, as a result of that, we may see further we, uh, strength for the likes of the euro dollar, for the pound dollar, and the dollar yen may come down uh, because of the equity market sell-off. So those are the key uh, markets I want to focus on today. Um, but just to show you the daily chart of the dollar index, the key level that I need to see to break for me to turn bullish on the dollar is um, is this black level here at 91.42. Because if that breaks, we will have had our first higher high in place. Um, resistance comes in at 90.43, which is this level here. It's turning to support, broke down. Um, so that level remains exposed for a potential retest later on today. Uh, but if the Fed um, speakers come out and uh, talk dovish, that could um, push the dollar without hitting that level, uh, and we may get down to uh, the uh, you know the, the 2021 and 2020 lows uh, around 89.20 ish to 89.50 ish. Um, Just out possibly. of curiosity, for what? Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi, <laughs> hi Victor. Joined. Uh, do, do you do you feel uh, the, don't you feel that uh, all this dovishness by the Fed has already been priced in? Um, I think um, some of it has definitely been priced in. Um, we the thing is um, the only way we can tell for for certain that it's been priced in already is, is when the markets form a uh, bottom formation. So a reversal. Of, yeah. yeah, reversal. Yeah. So when the dollar index does form a reversal, that would suggest that, yeah, the, the market has now fully priced that in. Now, what Victor is suggesting is that we may be very close to that being form, uh, priced in, uh, which uh, means that the dollar could be very close to forming a major low. Um, it it which, could. Uh, yeah. my, my primary uh, concern as, uh, you know, c concern for well, for all people that are bearish on the dollar is yeah. that um, they're ignoring that um, the this this cycle has has yeah. has unfolded and uh, with it's it's everything that has happened over the past uh, year really has been uh, priced into the market. Right. Uh, the recovery has been priced into the stock market, and uh, yeah. we are perhaps on the precipice of a major reversal in in stocks. Uh, that uh, you know that uh, that is just starting because yeah. um, you know, we we've we've had this ginormous rally. Really, um, the Nasdaq has. Uh, almost doubled uh, uh, since March 2020, and uh, this this complacency among investors that stocks will only continue to go up, whatever happens, mm. it it just never plays out this way, does it? No, no. There's a a lot of uh, people un un underestimating the risks facing them. 
Um, yeah. Which is, I think, um, you know, central banks have to take uh, responsibility for that because they have been just printing money and, you know, without worrying too much, uh, you know, about its consequences. Um, eventually that um, monetary support has to um, end at some point, right? And, and when um, that ends, uh, people are going to be wondering, you know, what's, what's next for the equity markets? Is the global economy going to um, remain so strong that it can wipe out, you know, or, or reduce the global debt substantially. Uh, you know, I don't think so. Um, so that debt, um, that stockpile of debt is going to come back and haunt investors at some point down the line. And who knows, it, it may have started already, you know, with the Nasdaq breaking its bullish trend line here. Um, yeah, my, uh, my main uh, actually indicator for yeah. following this, uh, the demise of this rally, so to yeah. say, uh is uh is is the dearest uh stock of them all and that is tesla yeah uh if you look at uh at that chart uh, i think that uh we're clearly in in i mean the bulls are clearly in trouble uh i i i feel like yeah pre-market by the way it's trading at 605 so we're already yeah, we're already trading below that uh, trend line that you just mm -hmm. uh, highlighted. And um, if we break the previous low, that, that's going to be a massive unwind, I feel. Yeah. Just because uh, too many people have bought at the highs. And uh, yeah. uh, e e even just... um, Elon Musk um, recently said that um, the sh share price of te Tesla, his own company, is, uh, well, he, he said that in December, everybody. by the way. <laughs> in December, yeah. <laughs> and then, so, uh, yeah, we, it was we, still rallying. We, we have gone, uh, uh, yeah, full full blown ballistic. Yeah. Or or as some some say, uh, full retard mode. <laughs> <laughs> who who would say something uh, like that? <laughs> oh, many people, man. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so, um, yeah. Um, yeah, that that's uh, something to have uh, in the back of your minds. So if you're uh, bearish on the dollar, uh, just be careful because uh, if this stock market rally unravels uh, massively, uh, the flow, the flight to to safety and into the dollar and the Japanese yen is going yeah. to be substantial. Yeah, yeah. We, we will we will touch on that now. Actually, uh, let's uh, let's go back to the. Uh, yeah. FX markets, and um, this is the dollar yen. Um, dollar yen has been going up along with risk assets um, until it didn't. Um, it then broke down, took out this uh, previous low, bounced back, and it's found resistance around the shaded area. Tried to break above it uh, momentarily, but failed. And now it's below that shaded region, which was previously support and resistance, and it's you know testing it from underneath. So. There is a good possibility now that uh, the dollar yen could head lower and break uh, further uh, lower from here. There is a trend line uh, that uh, I can see, yeah, right about here. And if that gives way, then that will give people more reason to sell the dollar yen, um, more technical reasons to sell the dollar yen, uh, really. So, so that's uh, that's 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 the thing to to keep a close eye on. Uh, the Japanese yen is, is a safe haven um, currency. Um, you know, we've seen uh, gold rise in the last few days uh, due in part to haven flows. And yeah. Japanese yen could be the next um, haven asset to, to rally. Drop. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, what about the commodity currencies? Uh, yeah. Do, commodity do you see currencies. anything uh, happening there? Not really at the moment. I mean, um, to be fair, commodity currencies are still quite strong. Um, we're not yeah. seeing that risk off sentiment in the FX markets yet, um, which is something to bear in mind because it could indicate that um, perhaps um, the markets, the stock markets are going to bounce back. It, it, it may indicate that investors are not in full on risk mode, uh, risk off mode yet. Or, um, or it could mean that um, FX investors are getting it wrong, right? So, um, 
something has to give. Um, now, insofar as the Aussie uh, uh, Aussie dollar is concerned, you know, it's, it's broken the right shoulder area of this head and shoulders pattern, thus invalidating the bearish argument that there was a head and shoulders here, it should have gone down, well, it didn't, it went up. So as things stand, it looks to me that uh, price wants to head higher and take out liquidity resting above this high. Um, now, that's how things start, look like at the moment. I would turn bearish on this market if this level breaks. So um, this low right here, because this was the last low created pri prior to price breaking out above this resistance area. Now, there's no reason for price to go below this level again uh, if the trend is still bullish. Thus, if that level breaks, then we could see a massive drop uh, in my view. Um, so... So that's that's the the, the key level for me. Uh, do you have any other thoughts? On well, this? Uh, we we could have a, a double top around the seven eight uh, fifty ish area, uh, meaning that it uh, it has already happened yesterday. All right. Uh, um, we we had uh, yeah okay yeah we had uh, prices. Uh, uh, Visiting the 7850 area uh, mm. two times. Uh, let's see if we can close above that yeah. uh, today uh, uh, and probably to or probably tomorrow. Uh, mm. That that would still be constructive for the Aussie, but uh, uh, this this area is for now seems to be uh, an area where sellers emerge. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's let's see how this thing unfolds. Um, now, uh, the way I, I I would proceed is I'd proceed with caution because, um, e, 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 you know, from both bullish and bearish points of view, because um, equity markets have dropped. Usually, the Aussie dollar follows the equity markets, and so far, it's not doing that. Um, it, it's not because yeah. uh, to, to 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 tell you. Uh, the bizarre thing that another bizarre thing that perhaps that is happening is that mm -hmm. uh, while the stock market has been dropping, copper has been making all new all time yeah. highs. Yeah. So um, that that's uh, something has to give. Exactly. Uh, now, how how do you recognize risk on and risk off? Is a question um, that has been asked by one of the uh, participants in this webinar. Would you like to tackle that question? Sure. So uh, risk risk off, a risk off environment is uh, generally characterized uh, with uh, stock markets uh, uh, drifting lower and safe havens like uh, gold uh, going in the opposite direction. Uh, also, you 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 kind of need to to. Um, monitor several asset classes in order to, yeah. to be um, fully aware of what's going on. Uh, yeah. Perhaps the 10 year yield is also a good indicator. If we, uh, I'm not sure if you have already sp yeah. uh, spoken about it today, but I haven't. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the, we, we had uh, this, uh, um, uh, this spike lower, uh, on Friday's jobs report uh, that yeah. was actually fully reversed. So yeah. what that tells you is that uh, the jobs report was bad, yes. However, uh, wage inflation picked up. So the bond market seems to be ignoring the, 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 the single bad month of data. Yeah. <laughs> Just like it did last month, actually. Mm -hmm. If you guys remember, we had this uh, uh, amazing uh, blowout number uh, uh, in the beginning of April. And just when everybody turned uh, bullish on the dollar, it, yeah. it, was, it, it started falling and falling uh, until the rest of the month. And... Now perhaps it, the, the, the opposite thing is happening because everybody is turning bearish on the dollar and it's, uh, the, the market is, is uh, 
ignoring the short term fluctuations in data yeah. and is focusing on longer term indicators like wage growth. Uh, obviously, like if if wages uh, start to go higher, unemployment is going to start ticking lower because those people that weren't looking for work yeah. uh, because of, uh, you know, the government stimulus checks, they're going to start returning into the labor force. Uh, the labor force participation rate uh, is still way below where it was uh, before the pandemic. So there are a lot of people who are yeah. uh, set to return into the job market. So sooner or later, these jobs are going to get filled, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, to, to, to return back to the uh, question of how to recognize to risk, on, uh, risk, risk on, risk off. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, as Vector said, one uh, the, the main way I think is, is to uh, look at the equity markets. If, if the markets are falling, um, but, but then you have to distinguish between is it a, a retracement uh, in a bull trend or is this a reversal? So it's it's minor risk off uh, when it's down, but n- inside a rising trend. But when you get a series of lower lows and lower highs, for example, when we got in, in, in March in, in here uh, of last year, in February, actually, um, that was proper risk off because once it broke down, look how sharply it went down. So yeah. if something like this happens again um, at these levels, then then um, that will be considered risk off. Right now, um, it's not totally risk off because uh, not everything is showing risk off characteristics. For example, the equity markets are down, but the dollar is also down. Usually the dollar goes up in risk off against Aussie, against the Kiwi, against the Euro, etc. Um, against the pound. Uh, but right now, the dollar is not showing that uh, risk off uh, sentiment uh, yet. Um, but the equity markets are talking, um, you know, they've been hammered Japanese uh, index as well last night. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's weakness across the board. Remember, everything started with China breaking down uh, several, uh, couple of months ago, actually. This is the Chinese yeah. equity market. Um, and no one well, really paid uh, much attention we, to this. we had this uh, major news item from China that uh, not yeah. many people have paid attention to, and that is that its population stopped growing. Yeah. And, you know, uh, this is not going to get any better. Like, population mm. growth in China is not going to reverse anytime soon. Like, their, uh, their population is, is now just starting to decline. So yeah. that's something to consider for equity investors, uh, not only in China, but worldwide, because mm. the demographic uh, trends are playing, also playing a role in a long-term cycle. So, Yeah, that's a very long-term consideration, though, yeah, the, the demographics. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, as far as China is concerned, interestingly, though, um, overnight it, it climbed uh, the, the index. Yeah, uh, I was which, looking at uh, this this morning that China is bucking the trend. <laughs> yeah. But so, after all, it has been, uh, it, it dropped uh, 30% yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So from, from the high up to there, it's, it's, a, it's a big drop. Uh, the 200-day moving average is, is being tested. So uh, th- there's bound to be some hesitation around this. Um, you know, for all we know, it could, it could start trending higher again. Um it's, it's one of those things that, you know, they have decoupled from the rest of the equity markets. Um, but, you know, usually uh, global equities tend to f- rise and fall together. But um, the re- one of the reasons I think that Chinese equity markets sold off is because um, the People's Bank of China started to tighten uh, its belt. You know, it withdrew some uh, monetary support or it indicated that it will. Um, that's why the, the Chinese markets went down or part of the reason why it went down. And we could see similar uh, things happen in, in, in the U.S. markets. If um, you know, we've got lots of uh, Fed speakers today, um, as you can see. Um, so, if, uh, yeah, what time uh, are those uh, key Fed speakers in your view? Sorry? What time do the key uh, Fed speakers uh, come, come in, in, into focus? Um, I think, you know, all of these guys are kind of dovish um, FOMC member, so it'd be interesting to see if uh, if if they change their tone. And uh, so uh, I think uh, Williams is uh, important. I think at three uh, thirty. At the same time, we've got the Bank of England governor speaking. By the way, um, 
you know, let's see, let's see what the, the general tone is. Um, you know, we can't just focus on one of them, but let's see if uh, they all have the same, uh, convey the same message or um, will there be like decent divergences? Divergence, yeah, yeah. So that, that could uh, be something that the markets would be looking at. Anyway, enough of the stock market. So let's go back to the currencies. And, uh, you know, we talked about the dollar yen uh, trend line um, and euro dollar is... Um, before I talk about euro dollar, let's talk about the pound first. Okay, I'll tell you why I'll, I, I want to talk about the pound first. So the pound, um, yeah, this is what we thought it might happen uh, last week. Um, the pound took its sweet time uh, inside this consolidation pattern, and then it broke out above that key 140 uh, psychological resistance. Um, it, it's a clean breakout, right? So we close well above it. What, what the world wants to see now is two things, right? First, um, a consolid consolidation. I think a, a, a bullet, you know, consolidation near near um, yesterday's close for a couple of days would be uh, the, the most ideal situation. Would be healthy, yeah. It would be very healthy. Uh, another uh, thing that they could uh, want to, or they may want to see is, is a pullback back to the 140 handle. Which uh, we can use then to, um, to, to, to buy the dip, like so supposedly, well, that that's what the bulls, uh, the people who are bullish on the pound would think. Uh, this this uh, move yeah. has been uh, kind of sharp uh, from one thirty eight fifty five towards uh, forty one twenty seven. We haven't uh, been seeing moves uh, such as this frequently in uh, cable over the past uh, several months. So yeah, um, that's uh, that's something that to 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 watch. Uh, to, to watch out for, um, we could have this drop towards uh, 140 that provides an opportunity to uh, buy the pound lower. Yeah, indeed. Now, um, the reason I want to cover the pound first is because usually the pound and the euro tend to go in the same direction, okay? And the pound has made its move. Now look at the euro pound, right? The euro pound has broken down, which um, is indicating that uh, the, um, that the uh, bias is bullish towards the pound rather than the euro. And that's why the euro uh, yesterday uh, held in a consolidation pattern. So if you go back to the euro dollar chart, you can see it was a small red candle yesterday, right? Today, uh, the euro pound has bounced and this is holding the, the pound in consolidation today and it's allowing the euro to, to rise. So you see those three currencies alongside each other uh, when you're trying to determine the direction of the trend. Now, um, insofar as the technical analysis of the euro dollar is concerned, um, the, the trend is clearly bullish. Um, and, you know, despite the equity market sell-off and everything else, I will maintain my bullish view on these currencies, uh, on the pound, on the euro, until the charts tell me, okay? Because, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's very easy um, being an analyst to, um, to have opinions on the market. And that makes my job really difficult because, uh, you know, as a fundamental analyst, I think, you know, the dollar should be going up, right? Um, but you have to, you have to respect um, the, the, the view of the market. Respect um, the charts. Yeah. Respect the charts. So for that reason, I have to ignore any urges that I may have trying to short this thing. I, I, I wouldn't do that until the charts tell me to do that. So right now the trend is bullish, price has been rising. The um, euro sh uh, has, has now taken out the first level of, I, I wouldn't say resistance, it, it, this, was, this was the high that should have never been taken out uh, when price went down really sharply here, right? Um, Above that level, there's going. There, there were lots of stops resting from people who shorted this thing. Um, now, some of those guys are not out of the way yet. So, where do you think their stops are going to be resting? Yeah, right above this high, and some of them will have stops resting above this high right here. So, those areas are the next pools of liquidity where um, we may see a short, shorter squeeze towards. So, here you can see that um, the euro has. Uh, broken this high, thus creating a higher high. And it went down uh, after reaching here yesterday and now it's bounced back. So what 
we could see now is something like this to unfold. So price takes up this high and then come back, retest that zone. And if the market's happy to continue higher, which I think it may well be doing uh, that, then it will be targeting the liquidity resting above this high. And we may see a nice clean breakout towards 125, um, which is the next big psychologically important level, right? It's 125 right here. So that's, that's the path I expect the euro dollar to take based on current price action. And purely because of technical reasons, I'm, I'm not considering anything fundamentals here. Um, now, at what point uh, will that um, view be proven wrong? Well, if price were to break through uh, its most recent lower low, which was um, its most recent low, which was created just be below the 120 handle at 119.85, um, if it breaks through that level, then at that point, um, the chart will tell us that it wants to go down. Yeah. And it will also take the 120 handle, which is which has been a strong support and resistance um, area in the past, as you can see um, on this daily chart. So I reckon um, the euro dollar is going to um, squeeze the, the shorts and it's going to rally sharply in the next couple of days. I could be wrong. And that's why I have the validation, validation level uh, marked on the chart. Um, now, going back to the pound, um, the pound uh, is... We, we talked about the pound, the, 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 what the bulls would like to see. Um, but in so far as uh, where it, it, it's most likely to head to, well, if, uh, something wrong with my mouse. <laughs> um, I, I think if, if, if the trend hacked. continues to remain bullish, I, Ru I, I think- Ru it, Russian hackers, man. Russian hackers, yeah. Blame the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it, 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 um, you know we, we saw some hacking activity in the US again um, in the what was it the, the oil um, what yeah, do you call it? oil the, terminals or something yeah, um, yeah the oil pipeline pipeline that's it yeah who, who did the US government blame for that they haven't blamed anyone yet yeah but I, I if, if if there is a prediction market uh <laughs> I'm ready to put my money on Russia <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or China. Or yeah. China, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be one of those two, uh, according to the yeah. US government. Um, by the way, we don't, we don't have any problems with Russia or China, for that matter. Um, anyway, uh, cable is going to, in my view, rise and take out the uh, previous high at 142.43. And... Uh, my ultimate target is 145. Will it get there? Um, I, I think it may because of the weakness in the dollar and improving situation in the United Kingdom <clears throat> with uh, lockdowns being eased further and things are slowly but surely turning back to normal. So that's going to provide uh, upward pressure on the, on the pound in my view. Um, we haven't covered commodities yet and cryptos. Let's do that now. Um, so silver and gold is um, looking, uh, they're looking quite bullish at the moment. Uh, gold found this double bottom formation right at support um, where we also had the 61.8 Feb retrace of the, uh, this large upswing. Here we also had the pre-lockdown high, um, pre-pandemic high. So that level was previously resistance. We broke above it and spent several months above it. Then it came back down. Support on two locations here, leading to a nice bounce. Um, then uh, gold went into a period of consolidation here, and it's broken out of that as well. So it's it's kind of closing in on the um, resistance area now, which is provided by this bearish trend line for the 200 and the 1850 level, which was previously resistance as well. This is the uh, zone where we may see gold come under pressure. Um, and it could come under pressure if the uh, yields um, start to rise further and out of this bull flag pattern, right? So keep an eye on this if you trade gold. If this um, breaks out to the upside, then it could provide downward pressure on gold once again. In any case, for now, the path of least resistance is to the upside. And let's see what happens at uh, around 1850 if we break through this area like a, in a nice, uh, with a nice big breakout. Uh, 
you know, candle, then we could see the buyers buy the retest of 1850 in the days ahead. Um, but um, in, in, in terms of risk to reward, if, uh, if you trade off the daily chart, um, I don't think it's an it's um, ideal location for the bulls right now. Maybe if it gets back down to 1800 area, that's where we had the previous uh, congestion zone. Around that level, we could see um, the onset of another rally. Um, alternatively, what you could do if you're going to is wait for a price to break 1850 and see if it consolidates there for a number of days. And then you could look to buy the breakout out of that consolidation um, pattern. Uh, obviously not providing any trade um, advice here. I'm just giving you some ideas how to get on board. Um, Selva is likewise looking quite bullish. Um, one of the ways to, to, or one of the ways I gauge the strength um, of the market is by looking at what price doesn't do. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Okay, so what I mean by that is, for example, if you look at um, if you look at this area here, we had lots of bearish-looking price action in that zone, right? Red day, red day. Um, and then we had a, a bearish day kind of, uh, at one point that looked like a bearish engulfing candle, kind of, and then it looked like it was going to break down. Um, and at that and point- then the market, up. And then it went up, yeah. And then the same yeah. thing happened. Look, uh, we, we had another red day uh, followed by a doji candle. Um, actually, the doji is quite a, a strong bullish signal, but the, the previous day, you know, it, it had created this red candle after a big breakout. Now, you shouldn't have seen that big red candle form after a big breakdown, a big breakout, but it was formed. Yet, um, there was no downside follow through. And yet again, we're seeing um, an inverted hammer here on, um, on the daily chart. And, and look what's happened. Um, we, we broke the low of that inverted hammer um, and took uh, it, it kind of took the sellers in, people who like to short on the break of the candle shapes. Um, and then it bounced from there. And now it's back within the previous day's range. So this is uh, telling me that the, the sellers are continuing to get uh, trapped uh, in this. Um, in silver, and that it wants to, it, it, it's trying to create um, liquidity, right? So it, there was liquidity. Void. The market makers or whoever makes the price of silver pushed the market down, took out that liquidity, and then pushed it back up. Um, so sellers got trapped there, and there are stops uh, from, um, you know, judging by the candle that was formed previous day. Some of those guys will have their stocks placed above the high of that uh, inverted hammer candle. So that's where I think uh, silver is going to head to next, possibly ahead of uh, much higher levels um, in, in the days and weeks ahead. So what about uh, oil? Oh yes, oil. Uh, oil is... Um, that's, an, that's some nice chopping out there. Yeah. It's a, it's a choppers, choppers right there, right? <laughs> um, yeah. I I don't have very strong views on oil at the moment. I I I think it, uh, it's going to turn lower uh, soon. Um, I was just uh, hearing today that uh, negotiations with Iran are going well, and yeah. uh, there might be a, a deal for 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 Iran to come back into this market. So right. How much of this is priced in? I don't know. Yeah, I guess we're we're going to find out when uh, we get an official uh, confirmation. Yeah, yeah, that absolutely. Um, right now, I, I think oil is a is a market you want to avoid um, right now because of the chop fest, unless that's something that you uh, excel in in terms of trading. Um, I, I I think. Um, Soon it's going to top out if it hasn't already done so, because um, at these levels, we're going to see more supplies coming in from shale producers as well. And as you mentioned, Iran, uh, possibly. And, you know, the demand the story is um, already priced in, I think, or most of it is, is priced in. Um, so, yeah, at the moment, you know, the OPEC plus are restricting supply, but they will be easing supplies in, in the months ahead. And that should create 
downward pressure on prices, I would think. Um, so against that backdrop, I, I don't really have too strong a view on it. I think prices will top out soon, but I'm not going to short it unless I see um, I see a bearish uh, bearish reversal. So we have one uh, comment from uh, H.H. Hassan, okay. who's, uh, who, who's speaking about the waves, uh, how many waves up in this, is this move of the euro dollar. I hope he wasn't, he isn't referring to your uh, drawing, which is- Okay, so if, if you're you know, referring just to my- Just an approximation. That, yeah, because I, I, I don't know if it's gonna do exactly like that. Uh, I mean, yeah, just yeah. take off or go down. It's just an indication of how I think price will go up. So ignore that, please. If, yeah. yeah. If you're not referring to that, then presumably you're talking about Elliott waves or something? Yeah, uh, I guess. Um... I'm not a big fan of uh, neither my Elliott wave theory. It's I, yeah. I think it's just bloatware. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're talking about Elliott waves, I don't know. I mean, this could be you know wave number one, the retracement, and then I don't know. I I I I, I don't know about Elliott wave too much to 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 provide a sound analysis on that. Uh, what I can say though is this is the weekly chart and it's looking quite healthy, doesn't it? And if you go, if you look at the monthly as well, um, we've broken this long that's also looking uh, that's also looking bullish, yeah. Yeah. And last month, remember we had a uh, green candle, um, or white in this case. Sorry, um, H H Hassan, I, I I don't know exactly what waves you're talking about, but uh, I hope that uh, we've answered your question. Any other questions? Let's talk about cryptos uh, while we wait for your question um, for your questions if you have any. So Bitcoin is um, not doing much at, at all these days because the focus has really turned into other coins, all coins, and uh, in particular uh, Dogecoin <laughs> and Ethereum. And Ethereum. Every time I, I put up a chart of Dogecoin, I just laugh. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, per, perhaps it's because of the pronunciation. It could be uh, Dogecoin. Dogecoin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ethereum, on the other hand, though, it's, it's looking quite strong still. Uh, I mean, yesterday it, it, it re reversed. Um, you know, at the time I was looking at, yesterday I actually put a right, uh, I wrote a report on it to say that it has now reached the 4,000 uh, level. And yeah, we posted that uh, it dropped, uh, but look where it bounced, uh, right at G590, uh, which was the piece of the breakout from this consolidation yeah. zone. So that kind of retains the bullish bias for now. Um, going forward, um, you know, 4,000 is going to be really important because we have the 261 extension as well there. That 261 extension is derived from, I'll show you where it's derived from, from this uh, drop from the 2018 high to the 2018 low. So we've broken all the retracements, all the other extension levels, and now we've reached the uh, uh, 261.8 Fibonacci extension of that swing. In other words, Ethereum is... Uh, has reached exhaustion levels. And that's why, or oh, part of the reason why we saw that swing down yesterday. But um, going to the lower time frame, the daily uh, hourly chart here. So right now, uh, Ethereum is uh, testing resistance. Uh, if I put a box around here, so this, this up move was the last up move before that big drop happened yesterday. In other words, this um, uh, kind of represents a supply zone. People sold into that rally, right? That caused this big drop. We are retesting that zone now. And it will be interesting to see if it reverses from here because you know it's taken out the previous high on the hourly time frame, but is still in this um, supply zone. And we can see price come down from here um, and, and take out the, the lows that were created 
um, overnight. So from here, what uh, Ethereum bulls want to see is a close above this black level here at uh, 41, call it 4170. Because the reason I selected that level is because um, it's, it's above that level where uh, we, we formed this false break reversal. Yeah. So if it closes back above that level now, uh, then that would invalidate the bearish setup that has been formed right here. Um, going back to Bitcoin, yeah, it's uh, it's consol consolidating uh, around that fifty um, thousand level, between fifty thousand to sixty thousand. Uh, this is the weekly chart, by the way. This is um, it could could be could turn out to be a healthy consolidation because you don't want to see uh, prices continue to go up um, in a straight line because when when it, when that happens, usually it doesn't end well. So from a bullish point of view, this could be a healthy consolidation for Bitcoin. And so far as the longer term con uh, is concerned. But um, yeah, I mean, from here, it, it's, 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 it's really ugly. I, I don't know which direction is going to head because we don't have any sound technical um, setups to provide. We're in the middle of uh, the recent range and yeah. generally, that's probably the worst uh, yeah. point in a chart that you want to make decisions just because um, yeah. price is usually going to go both ways um, yeah. and confuse it's, it's you. It's going to chop around. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, guys, I, I I don't really have anything else to to provide analysis on. I think we covered the main main markets, and there, there aren't any um, further questions. So, um, unless uh, Victor, you have anything else to add? No, I think we we covered uh, quite a lot today. Yeah. So, uh, uh, if you want to um, tune in for some more uh, market analysis. Uh, don't forget to join us next Tuesday. Yeah, so you can do that by going to our website, click on market analysis um, or hover around over it. And my mouse is not working again. Um, you can see a list of live webinars in this section here. And uh, yeah, just select the one that's, uh, we're going to update this page. Um, I think the next one is going to be, uh, let me check. It's going to be on the 18th. On of, the 18th. Yeah. And then we have another one. Um, with uh, Victor yeah. himself uh, identifying key goal themes. Now, um, I did promise uh, Victor that I will be in that webinar as well, but uh, Victor is going to be leading that. So yeah. make sure to join us for that one as well. Yeah. All well, right. Uh, we expect to see you next week. Uh, and mean, in the meantime, uh, good luck. Yeah, good luck and be careful out there. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.